Hola amigos, this is Eddie G and you are watching POV Where I take a topic in the news, mix it in a bowl with a little bit of milk and sugar and a little bit of vanilla extract Sprinkle in some of my opinions, then bake it for about 6 minutes Mmm, 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 delicious this week I came across three stories in the news about Latinos and football that I thought were interesting. The first story comes from the Washington Post and it asks, why are there so few Latinos in the US national soccer team? The second article comes from the Los Angeles Times and it's not so much a story as a list of players who have US citizenship who decided to play for other countries. The last story comes from Fusion or Fusion which talks about how without immigration, half of the US world soccer team would disappear. But first, do you like my jersey? I got it at the local supermarket. I know what some of you might be thinking out there. That looks like a $20 knockoff. It doesn't even have the right logos on it. Eh, wrong. It's a $17 knockoff. Love for football shouldn't be determined by how much you paid for a jersey, if you know what I mean. Anyway, here's my POV. First, I think there's many reasons why there aren't very many Latinos playing on the US national team. I mean, it's not like there aren't Latinos playing in the league in the United States. There's lots of them. But a huge number of these players are imported to come play for Major League Soccer. Meaning, they weren't born in the United States. They just get paid to play here. It makes sense that when the World Cup comes around, they're gonna go play for their home teams. But don't get it twisted, this is not just a Latino thing. In fact, the majority of the players in the US national team are guilty of this. You see, I did some very scientific and scholarly research on Wikipedia, which is never wrong. And I think my findings will amaze you. It turns out 14 players in the US national team play for foreign clubs. Some in the UK or France or Germany, Norway, the Netherlands, Turkey, Canada, and Mexico. In fact, only eight of the players in the US national team actively play in a major league soccer team in the United States. This is not uncommon actually. You see, football is international. What is uncommon though is that there aren't very many US born Latinos playing on the US team. I mean, come on. Latinos are a huge number of the US population. Football is one of the biggest, if not the biggest sport in Latin America. It runs in our blood. It's pretty much the one sport we can all afford, right? A ball, two sticks, or two trash cans, so you get yourself a game. So why is it that there's only three Latinos in the team? Alejandro Bedoya, who is Colombian American, Omar Gonzalez, who is Mexican American, and Nick Rimando, who is Filipino and Mexican. Why aren't Latinos represented in bigger numbers on these rosters. Look, all I'm saying is that if recruiters cannot find enough Latinos to play on the US soccer team, they're probably not looking in the right place. I mean, have they tried MacArthur Park in Los Angeles on a Saturday morning? Well, according to the Washington Post article and my own scholarly research, nope, they're looking for talent at expensive clubs and colleges. Well, no wonder there aren't that many Latinos on the US world soccer team. Lots of our talented youth and their families can't afford the fees to play on soccer clubs, but of course, this is part of a much, much bigger problem. I think the Washington Post article nailed it when they said, club soccer dominates in the US and it's an expensive and almost impossible barrier for Latinos due to the cost and the suburban nature of the program. I also found out that a large portion of the US national team was either recruited from a college or played at a college before joining Major League Soccer. Out of those nine, only one of them went to school in the West Coast at UCLA, the University of Caucasians, Latinos, and Asians. I think the Washington Post article got it dead right when they said the pipeline of talent to the World Cup team is broken for Latinos but it's also broken in the higher education system and the political system. The lack of development of Latino players is a symptom of the deeper problems in American society. Yup, the pipeline is busted. Not only in sports but in politics, education and a bunch of other systems too. And ironically your tío, you know the plumber you call to come help you fix all the pipes, can't really help in this instance. From where I stand, I can't fix all these pipes either. Sometimes it's easier to create new pipelines than try to fix the old ones that are broken and can't be fixed. So I say let's create new pipelines. Let's find alternate ways to get our Latino youth into professional football teams in the US. Let's get our phones and go down to MacArthur Park or any inner city park where lots of Latinos congregate, record the next Latino football superstar, and upload their talent to the internet. I mean, if social media can make that idiot kid from Canada famous from a YouTube video, why can't we do the same for our Latino youth? I mean, minus the idiot part, you know. Why can't we discover the next great football player the same way? Who knows, maybe the next Salvadorian-American Messi, or Mexican-American Ronaldo, Guatemalan-American Maradona. Maybe these youth are just waiting to be discovered. Which brings me to the last article. Without immigration, half of the US world soccer team would disappear. To which I say, duh. 
In the United States, immigration is part of who we are. We are a nation of immigrants. We all came here from other places. America is a hodgepodge of cultures, backgrounds, experiences, and more. It's no surprise to me that we have players of mixed nationalities and races. That's where things are going and I for one welcome it. But that's just my point of view. What do you think can be done to get more Latinos into soccer? I mean, football. What topic do you think I should do next? Leave your comment below. Make sure that you go check out Zona Once with Daniel on Mondays and Thursdays and come back next week to watch POV on Friday. Oh, also don't forget to like this video, subscribe, and share for favor. Thanks for watching POV. I'll see ya next Friday.